And I've got the watch party going. <laughs> <and> you, <Dad. laughs> you, Sean? That's, that is a face I don't want to wake up to every morning. Sure. Christian didn't catch it, which is good. <laughs> oh, I did. What did you do? <laughs> oh, nothing. <laughs> yeah. I'm recording, Sean. So. Of course you are. Oh. <laughs> Hey, and Joel is joining as well. Good oh, there goes Joel. the party. How you been, Mike? Good. Very good. Thank you, sir. Um, I'm glad to be back. Yeah, we missed you. Oh, no, you didn't. Oh, yes, we did. <laughs> oh, we did. Hey, uh, just to kick things off really quick, uh, for those that are watching on the live stream, uh, this is the... Uh, this is the Microsoft Community Office Hours, and it's an AMA format. So uh, we're we're fielding questions from a couple different locations, from the Office 365 community page out on fa Facebook, Microsoft Teams community page out on Facebook, as well as from the Microsoft Tech community unanswered questions file. And there's Joel's forehead. And his hair. Hey. <laughs> what up, Joel? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll find a better place to. I'm gonna put us in. Uh, it's all right. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put us into. If it'll go. Uh, I didn't do it. All right. So. I do notice this week, Christian, that your uh, resolution is quite a bit pixelated. Probably the phenomenon you described previously, but. Um, yeah, I'm actually, actually seeing that. Actually, I see Christian clear as a bell. I mean, literally. <laughs> no, literally, I can see you yeah. in high def, man. So, you're in and Mike, you were you were pixelated a few minutes ago. Joel's pixelated. Mike, you're now crystal clear. Sean, you're crystal clear. So who knows? It's it's dynamic. Oh, there you are. It's oh, and they shrunk you down. down. Mr. Oh. Hodgkinson. Hey. Hello, sir. How's it going? Hey, Joel. Long time no see. No kidding. It's been a long time. <laughs> Great to see you. Okay. Well. So we've got, uh, uh, and we might have Hal join us as well. Um, we'll go ahead and uh, get started. Sean, I thought we'd kick things off with your um, your homework from last week. If you could share kind of what, what you've posted. I know it's out on the page as sure. well. Yeah, I was going for extra credit uh, on that homework. So <laughs> anyway, um, were you I failing recently... the class? You were failing the class? <laughs> no, nah, not really. Um, I was uh, answering the question that Bilal, I, can't, uh, I need to find his last name here. Bilal was asking regarding, um, that's not the CDN one, this was the A quick look at get, get PNP group, and Joel, I just forwarded you the list of the, of the topics of the questions we're going to try and tackle, so. Great, great. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Or put them. Sorry? Or did you email them to me? Just I just curious. emailed you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But, um, yeah, so Bilal, uh, let's see here. Bilal Bajwa from Minneapolis, Minnesota was asking, has anybody used Get PMP Group for a site in SharePoint to get all groups in a SharePoint site? It returns a lot of garbage. Any idea how to filter? So I took that as homework, uh, and the post that I pushed out to my blog, SharePointInterface.com, last night, called a quick look at the Get PMP commandlet and its operation. Um, I wouldn't say that's rocket science, but I know um, probably a lot of the misunderstanding, or at least some of the misunderstanding around data that's returned by PowerShell. Um, a lot of that can be put into context by remembering that PowerShell is an object-oriented scripting language that leverages the power of Microsoft.NET behind the scenes. So um, many it's different... The power of .NET compels you. Sorry, I just it's, had to say that. It's, it's, it's <laughs> not a scripting language. PowerShell is a scripting language. It's a scripting engine. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> you say your potato, face, I Sean. say potato. <laughs> So in any case, the PowerShell scripting uh, engine, which leverages .NET behind the scenes, many of the different uh, return values um, and variable assignments in PowerShell may look like scalar values, but they that scalar value you think you're seeing is probably just the tip of the iceberg um, on an object that might be returned. So 
we went through that PMP commandlet. Um, I ran it, a bunch of different screenshots. Uh, he needed to know how to filter. And that that's the part that thankfully does not rely on a whole bunch of object oriented language. So uh, I included, you know, I did a couple filters on data that came back from my uh, family's tenant, the groups in there. And um, we, you know, hopefully it sums up what he needs. Uh, and he's good. I haven't heard from him yet, though. Not that I'm expecting. We'll see. Makes sense. <laughs> totally. Totally. <laughs> no, I'm not yeah, so I, I, I just shared the link in the in the chat here. So again, the. Uh, yeah, I think you and you. I think you CC'd him on the response or re responded to his on the Facebook. So if we've got any uh, responses to that. He we should see that. Yes, the book of faces. And yes. uh, and how welcome this morning. And we've also got uh, Rob. Hey, hey. long time listener, first time <laughs> participant. <laughs> yeah. And he's so, got yeah. a and, and Rob's got a, a weed problem, weed control issue on his ceiling there. I noticed. Yeah. yeah it's, it's rough. Hey, don't talk about Phyllis and Philip and Plato like that. They don't like it. <laughs> they have names. Yep. All right. Well, hey, let's uh, let's jump to question number two. And so I, I like some of these kind of more straightforward, more licensing discussions. Feel free to expand on this. Um Kathy asked the question, currently using Microsoft Teams free for my small business, so as two people. I really want the planner app, but can't see it. What paid subscription of Microsoft 365 do I need to get planner in Teams? E3. I don't know if you can yeah. get it with, I don't think you can get it with education anymore. I think it's just E3 or E5. Or A3. Well, you sure about uh, the A plans don't have it? I don't know. I, I I shouldn't say that. I'm just I'm just saying. I it, previously before they changed a lot of that stuff around, EDU didn't have access to it. I know that. But I think it was going to a play. I think even E1 includes Planner, doesn't it? I think so. Yeah, there's a page for it. Yeah, yeah, we're all we're all <laughs> hunting now. Business Essentials, Business Premium, Enterprise E1, 3, 4, 5, Education E3. Oh, EDU has it. Yeah. So. Okay. So just about anything. Yep. What's there, anything, new, anything but the free. That's, that's what we're saying. What's yep. this new bookings tool? Oh, you don't well, know about bookings? Bookings oh, no. not new. It's been around for a while. No. It, yeah, a while being like what three hours now. The Riz no, no, is no, joining us. Um, is, is replaced by Staff Hub, right? <laughs> or is the other way around? Listen, Joel. If I know about it, everybody in the world knows about it. I'm the <laughs> last person to find about anything. <laughs> what is going on here today? My goodness, I, I showed up a few minutes late, and there's like standing room only. <laughs> yeah, I had to squeeze you in. Pretty much. That's ordinary. What's up, everybody? Oh, not much. Here is. Hey, guys. You know, nice, stuff. Nice to see these friendly faces. Even yours, Christian. Yeah, even. Thank you. Even. Even. Mr. So, Bogue, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. They were complaining about I was being overtaken by the, the little shop of horrors, but I'm okay. <laughs> Feed me, Seymour. Hey, I know you haven't done. Oh. Christian, you haven't done housekeeping. Uh, which aspect of housekeeping? T-shirts. Oh, that's right. <laughs> All right, let, let's show us your T-shirts, folks. And Neil, keep your shirt on today. This is from my trip. <laughs> oh, Black nice. Peak. Nice, <laughs> Neil. You just faded into your background. Oh, yeah, it is just stand up. There we go. What do you have, Hal? <laughs> Neil has disappeared. Star Wars. Hal's, Hal's got to look at his shirt. Let me take the custom oh, off. There's some breakfast over <laughs> here. <laughs> Yesterday I had for lunch this thing here. 
catch you do wear that shirt a lot christian i've worn it twice (laughs) no repeats yeah you got it off the dirty laundry pile no it was it was literally it was the t-shirt that was on the top of the clean laundry pile but i've not (laughs) stacked up in the closet yet so for what it's worth i like your background here more than your yeah very much so really just a window. I do have some inspirational got things. Some, on yeah, you've got some nice uh, stuff on the wall there. Somebody in the family do that? No, we actually bought them. From a, like oh, okay. A lobby type place, but they're pretty cool. We have these yeah. things all over the all over the house. There's, there's everywhere you look. There's like spiritual info. Like if I look here, for example, hopefully the plugs don't fall out of my screens. But <laughs> this is gonna be bad. Hang on. I do like how the clock is up above the window behind you. Well, then so I don't have to put about time. We have all these things all over the house, like inspiration oh, quotes yeah. and things like that out there. Ah, oh, cool. Oh, yeah, it's fun. Gives you something to look at that lifts your spirits when you're in a poor meeting. <laughs> yeah. That, not that that ever happens. <laughs> <laughs> all right, mm. hey, question number three. Uh, Khaled asks, uh, so it says, I have Windows 7 64-bit. Suddenly I can't use Teams oh. anymore. Yeah, 10. Why are you on Windows 7? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I like I like adding the occasional just the, there's no no so don't ask anybody ask like well for follow up there like there was no other information. So it's it's uh sometimes it's fun just to have that as a discussion point like yes. what could possibly be happening. Hence uh, the brief answers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Khaled. Can't yeah. help you. Beyond need upgrade. Johnny Five need more input. <laughs> well, the first thing is, you know, uh, you know up, upgrade off of Windows. I thought, 7. I, I thought I was, I thought I was the one to use the obscure movie references. Come on. <laughs> uh, what reference was that? I missed that. Oh, come on. What was it? Sorry, say it again. Johnny Five. Johnny Five. Johnny Five. He's alive. Christian looks like he doesn't I know what we're talking about. Accident. Look at this, Riz. Worry, he, does, he doesn't know what we're talking about. <laughs> but again, if I know, everybody knows. Short circuit. <laughs> oh, I haven't seen uh, that. You have to watch uh, it. Uh, realize okay, my standard response. Didn't realize we were going back to junior high. Okay. That's a standard nerd movie. A standard. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> it's, it's, That's how you rationalize it, Mike. <laughs> Yeah, I just wasn't that into that movie at the time, so. Yeah. I, I'm familiar with the, the plot and general period. Yeah. But I, I, seen I, think, the I think I saw it in the theater, and that was the last time. I've not seen it since. Two buckets of popcorn? Yep. Potentially, yes. So I have a, I have a question. Yeah. Actually, I have uh, kind of a statement slash question. Oh. Anybody see this announcement about the uh, ability to trigger flows from Teams? So, I did myself. Yeah, it came out came out last week. Um, they actually you you can trigger a flow um, inside of flows um, from any message from Teams. That's cool. So yeah, if you're looking for keywords, you're looking for regex, you're looking whatever. You can trigger a flow, so it's really kind of cool if you think about it. If anybody's worked with IoT or work with with flows at all, um, being able to set set up a, a workflow off, you know, or or turn on a light, uh, something, you know, uh, whatever, based off of a message that comes across in Teams, that's pretty cool. Definitely, that is cool. Hey, we've Thanks got a couple. Point. Couple comments from uh, Eric Silver, who uh, who made a comment. He says about the planner. He says uh, you can use Microsoft 365 Business Basic, um, so it's targeted to less than 300 users. Um, so that's that's an option as well. Don't have to that's have cool. e-, e series. So I think we said uh, it's 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 in a yeah, number business. of places. Yeah. yeah. So essentially, just not the free. You've got to be paying for something somewhere to get the planner app. The other thing he mentioned is, uh, says that I didn't realize you could still get the upgrade from seven to 10. Um, they've not, Microsoft has not disabled it. He says, if you have a valid product key for windows seven, you should be able to get that free upgrade. So I, really? I, I thought yeah. that was gone. 
I was going to mention that, but it's like credits for hybrid hybrids cars. You know, you think they're gone, but they still keep uh, popping up. <laughs> Just saying. Excellent. Wow, what an obscure reference that was! Holy. <laughs> <laughs> you know your 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 message about team makes me think as well like how how many flows in the future will be connected to teams like i i, I think it's going to be an interesting idea yeah. how Answer much all. of what we do is going to be front-ended by by teams well especially if you think about it if you do flows with sharepoint you know because you can you can use flows with sharepoint and knock off you know, workflows for documents or whatever, or processes or lists, right? lists. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, I was just thinking. I, I as as far as IoT, I don't have my house set up. I know there's some people that have them with their lights. It would be kind of cool for like right in front of me if I have it automatically set up and I've got the smart light bulbs. I've not installed them. Um, that I've I've picked them up at different conferences and stuff as speaker gifts, that type of thing. But to flicker when it's getting like five minutes to the end of a meeting or something, would that not be cool? Look it, at that. It knows your schedule and then flicker the lights at the five. Are you, seeing the, are you seeing the traffic light? That is freaking awesome. Alexa, turn on the traffic light. So I will tell you it's good and bad. Um, there's a, a number of modules you can plug in. Uh, I made the mistake of setting them up in the, the Razor suite of uh, applications for gaming peripherals and i was down in the game room and then suddenly the lights start going bonkers based on what's happening in the game my son's like can you stop doing that i'm like i, I don't even know how it's happening first so <laughs> gotta find that <laughs> but yeah synced gaming software and all sorts of other things what you're suggesting christian is definitely within the realm of possibility right now i know a lot of people have uh and, and so i like my my office is in my basement and uh so something my wife is it complains like i don't know what i can come down if i need you for help for something in the middle of the day of what's going on she'll like i hear her calling for me i'm in the middle of a call and she'll come down and she'll open up the the door fuming like why haven't you answered me and you know, and start talking to me and I'll just ignore her because I'm focusing on whatever. And then she kind of like, oh, I got got the hint. And and I, I want to do the color light setup in the stairwell down to the basement. Yeah. So she knows red, don't come down. He's recording or whatever. And it's uh, inc incredibly easy to do. Incredibly yeah. easy to do, especially uh, if you can trigger off of something like Teams, you could trigger when you get an actual start a Teams meeting. Yeah. You know, because a message comes across that you started a Teams meeting, you can trigger a light change. But I do that now is I have a light outside of my office door and I do. I just have a Wi-Fi remote. I just have a little remote that I push here on my desk and I change the color of it. So my kids know not to come, you know, banging on my door or anything. Yeah, um, I've got one. Of those. There's a third party that has a, a light system where you can have a little light on your laptop that's red yeah. or green. The base yeah. on your team status. Yep. yep. Yeah. Like, this uh, like, like like Rob was just showing, I'm sure his uh, traffic light probably works effectively. Yeah, I traffic hear. light would bolt to a laptop real well. <laughs> <laughs> Wear it on a backpack or something. A, a, a giant can. helmet. Have, affix that, weld that onto a, a spot, weld that onto a helmet there, Rob. Traffic man. When we start traveling again and we're on an airplane, I'm just not sure it'll fit in the overhead compartment. <laughs> well, Rob, I thought those streetlights like weighed like, you know, 200 some pounds or something like that. They're like massive. Um, they're they're massive, uh, but they don't weigh quite 200 pounds like this. Like part of it is people don't realize how big they are. It's yeah. Brick. Mm -hmm. I'm just I'm just wondering how down. unsafe that is, Rob, for you to disconnect that from that intersection near your house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shh. Nobody's supposed to know. Yeah. <laughs> if you hear the screeching in the background, you'll know why. It's not like taking a stop sign. You know? No, but, <laughs> but here's the thing, right? Like, so what I this was I needed I, I really did this. This has a purpose. Um and it's to remind me that the things that I can do doesn't mean that they're things I should do. And I was looking for stock art for it. And I was in one of those moods. Do you guys ever get into that mood? Like, I'm just solving this problem. I don't care. 
and I couldn't find the stock art. And I'm like, I wonder if anybody sells stoplights, right? And so you search on on eBay, and and oh my gosh, there's a guy selling stoplights on eBay. So that he got with a five finger discount. Yeah, I, you know, right. I, I just don't ask those questions. And then the guy pulls up and opens up his trunk. Says, Fell hey, off the you, back of a truck. Yeah, what do you need? <laughs> this one actually does have a full backstory, but yes. You have to, you have to think about it. But you can get anything on Amazon, eBay, or Etsy. One of those three. Like it doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. Well, as a as a music collector, uh, you know that was fantastic. Like when eBay started, it was fantastic. For a short period of time and then suddenly i mean the positive side of that you could find anything the downside of that is you can't sell like the value of everything that you owned that used to be rare and hard to find and valuable just went in the toilet yeah like driving a car off the lot yep all right hey question number four uh elaine asks a question we've seen uh some variations of this yeah. Uh, the the join button is missing from my neighbor's Microsoft Teams. It's not my Microsoft Teams. It's it's my neighbor. It's my friend. Asking for my, a friend. Asking my, for I'm a friend. asking for a friend. Yeah, I've tried uninstalling and reinstalling it, but doesn't still doesn't show. I've tried using a smartphone that works there. So trying in the Microsoft Teams browser version, it doesn't let her log in. I've tried logging in her account on my PC, and it works. Also, the browser version works too. Everything works on my end except her PC. So it's not working on her PC. She tried a different browser on that PC. Or in code. And that worked. Private browser. It's just the app. Yeah, that's... Well, obviously, you've narrowed down specifically to that PC. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what else is special about it? You know? Yeah, I mean, I would try an in-browser. I would try a private window first to try and not have any cache involved at all. Just yeah. to see what happens, you know, um, and if that still produces the same result that she tried, I mean, God forbid you try to switch over and use Chrome or Firefox or Opera or something, yeah. um, you know, other than Edge. I don't know if she even say what browser was being used. No, no. OK, well, you, you try something different, um, you know. So. The yeah, client go. works, but the web browser does not. Is that the client? That's what does, I, or I the, think that's what I heard. Right, Christian? Uh, she's tried logging in on the other PC and the browser version. It all works. It just doesn't work on her PC. Yeah, her profile works. So the friend is able to log into her account and everything works properly. And it's just not working on her PC. I would huh. say sign out, sign back in. Yeah, she may not even be aware that it's account dependent, as we all know very well from the probably 40,000 IDs we've got. You've got yours down to 40,000? Good work, dude. <laughs> I don't really care. Oh, it's nice. a last pass problem, not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I would sign out. The other thing is uh, go to Internet Explorer. Everybody boo now. Um, go to Internet Explorer <laughs> and go clear your uh, cache. Uh, your cookies so pop any authentication that may be it's just odd that you, you, you'd see it you know it, having the problem with her profile on her pc with both the desktop application as well as the browser version well she tried desk, installing and installing my understanding though is that the desktop app actually uses uh browser frames inside of it mm. am i wrong on that my, that's, um, that was my understanding is it's not a total isolated application. It actually uses um, browser browsers inside because it has to be able to when you click tabs because tabs contain websites and things like that. Well, I know it did on tabs for a bunch of apps. I don't know that the core product does, though. We, I, I thought that I, I was under that understanding because hmm. it needed that ability to connect. Um, because it's it's an HTML5 interface, um, but I I could be wrong. Yeah, I've had this this kind of scenario has happened to me in the past where um, someone from an external organization schedules a meeting with me through Teams, and I have to actually open the meeting information and click the embedded link in the message. I don't get the join button, but the link to the meeting is still in the actual invite. 
Yeah. So maybe that's yeah. a possible workaround in this case. I don't know. But looking at the screenshots on the actual link to the um, tech community thing, it looks more like a meet me now scenario. Meeting running like a ad hoc versus a scheduled meeting. Oh. Hmm. Christian, you didn't include the screenshots. Hal's got something. What's up, Hal? Nothing. I, oh, I thought you were going to say something. Hal laughs at us. No. He smiles no, but, in the background. But I did provide the link so that you have access no, to I'm the just screen. Here to watch their show, so. uh, no Microsoft chat specialist. I don't want to speak to you. Uh, all right. Well, let's see here. Do we want to move on to number five? I don't know that we've got much more to really add on. We can do that. It is a longer one, folks. If uh, but uh, so so follow along. Uh, says we have uh, this is from Philip. Says we have streams secured with conditional access, so location based, and Teams without conditional access. This turns the sign in and functionality of Teams into a total mess. For example, someone has a conversation in Teams where streams uh, the content has been posted. If you call the user for a Teams call on your mobile, they can answer the call, but they are then hit with a raft of security warnings and pop-ups about restricted content, and some users are unable to even get to the call behind all the garbage that the app throws at them. I logged this twice with Microsoft, and it was a struggle getting them to understand the problem, and both times the end result was being told that's just how it is. The app isn't very good. There, there's a distinction too between people <laughs> to understand between what the product team understands is happening uh, and and support, and it's another reason why it's important to yeah, yes go log a problem and support, but also to go out to like the Microsoft Tech Community um, if it's a voice, feature yeah. out on User Voice and do some research around that. I wish that. The, 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 all of those things were more aligned. And sometimes you have product team members that are very active in that, but support is very much separate from mm -hmm. uh, uh, what the product team is aware of and uh, is often you know, the, the wrong people to sh be sharing this kind of information with, although it's a necessary step to log it from a support standpoint. So the yeah, remainder of this, so has anyone else had to deal with this or know how I can implement something that doesn't just result in a load of error pop-ups? Uh, TLDR Teams function and, and login on mobile app is completely wrecked if the user has content within a Teams chat from secured service. Removing the conditional access from stream is not acceptable as it is there for a specific reason. If a CA is removed, then the Teams app works fine. Yeah. Uh, so I, think, I don't know. Go ahead. I was going to say, so it talks about security warnings and pop ups. So it sounds like this is actually a by design feature that just doesn't lead to a great user experience. <laughs> I was going to say, push it back to your admin. Um, you know, I, I suspect you could whitelist applications or destinations or set a list of exclusions. Um, the controls are granular enough to do that um, in the admin console, aren't they? Well, the trick is, is if you want some of stream restricted, but not all of stream restricted, and Teams is going out to make the calls to stream because that's where it's throwing its recordings, right? It's trying to figure out, hey, can I do, can I do a recording of this? Is this being recorded? Is anybody watching? And so the app internally is making a dozen calls or two dozen because it's Teams because it's got to do things twice. Um, I would think there would still be a way, though. Teams passes headers, um, I assume request headers that identify. And I wonder even if that garbage that they're talking about actually is a symptom. The garbage probably would tell you a little bit about what it's trying to say is the yes, problem. Philip, send us your garbage. <laughs> as easy as that sounds, pictures and logs and whatnot some of these a lot of these problems that we get that we can't really answer are as any viewer has probably noticed the very first thing we ask is we need more information a lot of times we don't have anything to work from 
Well, that's the, the, the benefit of asking a question and as part of the live stream if they're participating versus us and going pulling from these the various locations. But you know, it almost they, it's almost compelling enough for people to deal with us to ask that question. Almost, yes. You're asking uh, a lot. But, <laughs> yeah. but it, I think somebody said it uh, a second ago is that the you know look the conditional access and and some of the experiences by design if somebody's trying to access something and there it's the 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 recording was from you know has conditional access and somebody that's outside of that permission group then that is that that makes sense the difficulty is that when you have the system if you have uh, you know one person who's uh, within the boundaries of the conditional access one that's outside and they're trying to collaborate and if they're trying to capture a recording if it's limiting or, or or wrecking that experience because of the default settings of that conditional access let me see there needs to be some intelligence to know that hey by default i'm within this restricted area anything that i'm going to capture and record if i've got the right permissions it's fine but if i'm going to go in a meeting with you know half of you that are here in this call that don't have access to that um, that it needs to adjust those settings and at least ask me to confirm, hey, you realize that re this recording will be captured in a place that half of the people that participated now won't be able to access that recording. Um, so there needs to be some dynamic adjustment to those permissions or at least give me the option to, to know that, hey, three of the people that I've invited in won't have access to this. Do I want to grant them uh, access to that or or move forward knowing that they won't get access to the recording. Anyway, I just think there needs to be, uh, you know, some more uh, you know, automation that happens in those mixed permissions scenarios. Automagically. Automagically. I guess use a voice. Go and ask yep. the question there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, People, I think, assume that Microsoft is a single monolithic organization where everybody has line of sight to everyone else. Like going to a foreign country and somebody goes, oh, you're from America. Do you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, Microsoft I think is a big of, organization. What's that, Joe? Um, for lack of a better way of explaining it, I, I'm not much of a, a sports enthusiast, but there's a football analogy where you have... Uh, American football game. or... Football, the I'll, rest I'll, I'll football. Yeah, football. Let's say American football. <laughs> American football, you have your first ring. And then there's those who, you know, there's the special teams. Support is special teams. You know, they're they're coming out uh you know, short the, bus the, special teams who are working on the product, who are working with the PMs who have the product designs in mind. And then the support in a lot of ways, they kind of feel like we're stuck with supporting this thing and they're on to the next version. You know, the engineers are now focused, you know, where, where's this going? What are the new features? And then you've got support who now is uh, dealing with the situation that was, was, was created prior. So they're at the bottom of the hill. Yeah, basically a, the fallout. You know, they try and address as many bugs as they can. That, 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 that first team, uh, the first string you could say, um, and then uh, it goes into support sustainability or, you know, there's the, those who are trying to address those bugs, but you've got the, the first string who's really fo focused on what's next. Um, so they try and reduce the amount of bug count as much as they can. But if you've got something that, that truly is a bug, yeah, support, even, even within support, once you can identify it's a bug and it's something they can go and then fix. If it's if it's something that was by design, you know they'll they'll, they'll end up closing it, and that's where it gets moved to user voice, where it's like, and hey, I actually really want it to behave like like X Y Z. Well, and that's if why if you if you give you a workaround, yeah, mm -hmm. if you if you thoroughly document the scenario and say, hey, look, like I I tried to describe it, uh, you know, outline, say, hey, this specific scenario of a mixed permissions, you know, meeting and the recording and access to that outline that that's the thing that you would want to go and do a little research on in the tech community and out on user voice uh, to ensure if there's something out there that already addresses that scenario. If not, log it, add it, and uh, 
and, and share that out through uh, the various social channels and get community people to go and, and upvote that thing and talk about it. So Microsoft, you just need a handful of responses. We'll get in there and and respond to it. And it may be that you know they ask some clarifying questions, and it could be something that they're aware of and is on the the roadmap. Uh, or uh, in, in this scenario, it could be that they're unaware. This is an issue that uh, it's it's working as they designed it in the scenarios that they were familiar with that they kind of uh, envisioned. Yeah. And that corner case, you know, you're you're <clears throat> using it in a way that may not have been intended. Yeah. yeah. Which could be the way that everyone else on the planet uses it. It just wasn't right. the way they designed it. Right. Right. Mm. Well, that's, that, and that's that's a, a something that you've got to be careful with any any software development team, product development team, is that you do you get into this kind of this closed, uh, you know, this closed off world. You have your perspective, and it's why good product teams are constantly doing that community outreach and and trying to get more data and they're iterating on their their ideas. Microsoft does a good job at that, but one of the what are their their methods of collecting information is through community discussion and tech community out and user voice. So you've got to log it there. Or invite Microsoft people along like Neil. Sorry, I didn't mean to put you into the token <laughs> Microsoft person category. <laughs> But as our token Microsoft person that's on this recording, you, we have to refer to you as the token Microsoft. That's okay. I can take it. By the way, I'm I'm two weeks from my 15th year anniversary at Microsoft. Woohoo! Congratulations. Like only yesterday I was meeting Joel at Tech Ready 2. <laughs> that's exciting. Congrats. Yeah. When did you start there? So, yeah, when did you start? 15 years ago, Christian? <laughs> oh, no. So, it, what? what like the what era was that? What was going on? Where, where did you join? And it was 15th of September 2005. So SharePoint 2003 was the the big thing back then, as such yeah. as it was. And we were in planning for 2007. So that's when I got dragged into a bunch of product group stuff and things with uh, SharePoint. Yeah, SharePoint 2007 was pretty much kind of on the horizon. Um, were, you, were you in the field or, or were you in Redmond? I was Microsoft's first ever SharePoint PFE. Okay. And based out of the UK. Patient zero. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then I moved. Then I moved to engineering in 2010, um, working for Dave Walsh's organization in the yeah, cyber liability. Yeah. yeah, Dave's awesome. Working, I still see his biking posts and stuff. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, and then I worked in SharePoint Cat after 2013, working for Luca, which yeah. is awesome experience. Stayed there, then fast track for SharePoint and OneDrive, and now I'm in Azure engineering that's right you walked yeah. away from i did uh, after 20 years of sharepoint i'd finally had enough what do you mean walked? <laughs> how about run <laughs> uh all right here's a sharepoint question uh six dan asks uh i was wondering if anyone could help uh, i'm currently replacing my classic site with the modern sharepoint and want to replace my classic root site with my modern site However, when I go to do this in admin, there is no replace site option. PowerShell is your friend. Yeah, I just included a, a link. It's also worth noting that I believe in order to replace the, the root site, um, a successful health check is necessary. That's either implemented or in the process of being implemented. Um, so if you don't have the page diagnostics tool, get a copy of that. Um, they want to make sure you're not going to swap something in that's going to turn the site into mush and everybody else in the tenant unhappy. But replacing the root site is a pretty common procedure these days, especially everybody going to modern, which is much, much better. Chirp, cricket, cricket, cricket. No, sorry. I, I, well, I don't know if anybody else has anything to add to that. I just realized that uh, the person asking question seven, that's the, pretty much the same question. Um, the the problem with the uh, Teams, the web app versus desktop. Well, uh, no, no, no. This is slightly different. They can get to it. If you look at the screenshot, it literally says Teams is disabled. Um, 
for, let's see, they get an error message with a code, actually. They get a um, correlation ID of some sort, and uh, Microsoft Teams is disabled. Hmm. So this tells me the the message they sent is from a phone. So either it's disabled for mobile devices or it's something bigger, but I would seek admin help on this one because I've yeah. got a feeling it has to do with configuration settings. I guess I should should state the question. So for point of reference for everyone, but oh, um, this one yeah. comes from C. Stansky. Uh, can log into Microsoft Teams web app, but not desktop or iOS. I can log into Teams in the web app, but not on the iOS or desktop app. Both apps ask for authentication. They return a message that Teams is disabled. The account I'm using associated with the Gmail email address and has no uh, and has no admin. I or the company inviting me to the Teams can access. That that's a that's a different issue. Yeah, the the Gmail thing is a a different issue. But I would talk to the admin who um, of the tenant you're trying to get access to because this looks like some sort of restriction on logins. Um, if ahead, you look Rob. at your, I was going to say, if you look at that uh, that error code, it's AAD. STS, it's Azure Active Directory uh, token service. So it looks like external users are prohibited from joining teams. But yeah. Th that but would he be said he can shot. get to it. He can log into the teams on a web app. So I'm, I'm, I don't yeah. think it's that broad, but more like conditional access policy. Maybe it's, um, I know at least for a mobile device, if um, it's not a managed device, they may not allow it. It's a possibility. On. Yeah, there's some weird behavior that happens when um, a few things that happen that are over on the admin, that tenant admin experience. If you're not allowing external uh, users, if you somebody doesn't have the right license type, um, if a specific domain, like somebody's gone in and blocked Gmail accounts, period, across the board, um, can can experience some odd behavior. It doesn't just send you an error message that tells you this is exactly what's happening. If it's uh, a full moon or a Thursday. Right. Also known problems. A lot of known problems there. It's the, the, the tidal moon, yes. And um, you know, sunspots, a lot of causes of solar flares, definitely solar, solar flares. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, but yeah, so check with your admin, and uh, I, I think you know, determine if it's one of those kind of easy things. It's not not about your email admin; it's about your tenant admin. Take two aspirin and call them in the morning. Yes. Uh, all right, uh, number eight, uh, question from uh, Depwins, D-E-P-W-N-Z, um, about a reply on desktop app. It says, may I know why it's 2020 and replying to a comment is still not a, vi uh, not a feature on the desktop app? Why are things like video background made the cut but not replying <laughs> to a comment on desktop? This is 2020 and literally every single communication app can do that but not a chat app geared towards enterprises? Question Back in my day, <laughs> we had chat. Agreed, Depwins. Yeah, I, I I can't argue against it. Just maybe not enough people see it the way you do or rely on that type of uh, ability. I don't but. know what's been on the roadmap, what they've they've talked about. So they've definitely, I've I've seen some... Uh, some you know really nice uh, features around the the chat and the threaded discussion experiences, where uh, I know that they want to fix this issue. I just have no idea where it is. Can you can you clarify? I mean, maybe maybe it's it's intuitive to you guys. What what <laughs> app are they talking about? I mean, it says desktop app. Which desktop? Oh, app? Teams in Teams. teams. Sorry. Oh. Yeah. And the interesting yeah. is you can't yeah, you reply, can't to, reply to a comment in the chat. What's that, Neil? You can reply to a comment in the mobile app in a chat. Mm -hmm. 
So not well, that's a chat though. Is it in a team? It might be different. Yeah, and the team, right? And it's and, and part of the problem. People don't know what we're talking about. It, it, part of the problem is you know it is responding in a threaded manner. Chat operates differently than the threaded discussion. It's that's meant to point. be chat is meant to be flat. Um, and, and so while it can have a, a reference point, it'll still be in, in the order. If you want to be able to see the specific response to a, a discussion thread, that's in the channel discussions. And you can do that. Yeah. The problem that I have there is that it's been, you know, the UI is, uh, you know, it's constant state of, of update, uh, part of the evergreen model. But, you know, needing to be indented, needing it to be clear that when you're responding you're not starting a new discussion a new you know bubble of of uh of conversation um but just to clarify there's two different things there's the the chat and the discussions in a channel are two different things yep yeah yeah and i and i'd say as well it 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 seems like that's an area that needs to evolve i think we're all asking for more threaded discussions in chat whether it's in channels or whether it's in in just chat itself, but it's a it's a roadmap question. You know, what uh, what how's that going to improve over time? Anybody got roadmap.office.com open? So this is something that has been discussed. Again, I, if somebody's got roadmap open, can can do a little investigation there. Um, I'll get it open in a second. I'm just, I'm already at work on the next question, which has already been answered about 30 minutes ago. So while how much, we, how much work went into that, Sean? Um, none by me. Okay, just checking. Just saying. Yeah, it was answered. Um, let me get roadmap open. I feel like setting up a big screen television that always has roadmap on it. Seems like I'm always out here. Of course, we'd have to add some LED lights and bling to it. I thought about it. I have this giant monitor sitting on the floor, floor over here, which is one that I had for shows. And the, you know, the, remember those things that we used to go to? And uh, yeah. Oh, no, Chris, what, what are you referring to? Uh, I know, and I, I so I've thought about that. It's like, what I, you know, I could just actually hook it up to my other screen and just have that, have that uh, the the roadmap site or something just up there live in real time. But yeah, we've got an extra. I could take down my whiteboard and put up a. Hmm, now I'm thinking, I've got ideas that my wife will nix right away. <laughs> Talking about shows though, very briefly. Who's going to Branson? I had to cancel. Sean. It was not my choice. Sorry, Sean. They they won't let me back into my country. What what do you want me to do? <laughs> uh, that's right. Well, I have to talk to you about that, Christian, because uh, I know you're handling a lot of the virtual stuff. I talked. Yeah, to I'm actually. I, I so I've got a I've got a call this afternoon, and so I'm still still have space for. I need to lock down the first version of the uh, schedule for that, but we actually have two virtual tracks, so I think I've got space. Obviously, it's the, you know, the the first spots are held for those people that were planning to be there, the speakers that can no longer be there. Um, but uh, I yeah, think we, I, so. I, I we've got the call. It might be filled, but we might have a spot that's being held for you because you're not there. Oh, okay. So, I got you. That's what I need to verify. So we they, we thought about adding a whole nother track and then reaching out to a few folks in community, but I think that there's enough of the people that were supposed to be there speaking that it's it's already going to be filled. So makes sense. I'm actually looking for or I'll just kind of a call that's out there for anybody. I'm looking for people that are interested in being moderators for those uh, those sections. So I'm looking for morning and afternoon moderators. So essentially three hour spots and we're just going to have, we're going to use meetings rather than live uh, events. And Your uh, Mike. yeah, so um, Mike, uh, you know, let's, let's chat afterwards, you know, cause definitely looking for help with moderators. So I'm going to, uh, there's a, I'm sure everybody here on this call knows 
but there's a call for speakers uh, group out on Facebook. So uh, later today, I was going to go and post for those moderators. So yeah, send me a link. Yeah. Speaking right. of events, I'd love yeah. to just pitch the fact that I've got a we got the party this um, on Thursday. Yeah, pitch it, Sean. Oh, Sean. Sean knows nothing about it. He's useless here. Joel. In general. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, I was speaking launching, in general. It starts with we're launching a virtual community. You know, with COVID, there's everything's all, all virtual anyway. But uh, and a lot of the user groups, it seems like a lot of them have been on hold. And then there's a number of people who just don't have user groups. In fact, about a third of the people who've signed up so far say they have no access to local group user groups. Wow. That's kind um, of surprising. So, yeah, yeah, it's interesting. So basically, the intention is to create this global virtual user group focused on a number of different technologies in the Microsoft 365 stack. And uh, to, to get enough momentum, to get some energy going around this community, we're starting with a party. Instead of starting with a session, we're starting with a party. And the party to launch this uh, M365 virtual community, yeah, yeah, is um, it's planned for, it's noon Pacific, which would be one mountain, two central, three <laughs> Eastern, um, and seven UTC, 7 p.m. UTC, were um, to kick off this global virtual community launch party. And we've got uh, lightning talks that Christian can tell us about. We've got uh, three different rooms with music and dancing, um, where we're going to have Keith Ritchie music in one room, Joey Snow music in another room, and uh, Martin Visser, whose uh, brother is a, uh, a Twitch streamer who does video DJ. He's in a room. And then we got um, trivia from Martin Visser. We've got uh, some cosplay, so people will be able to dress up and kind of do fun stuff. Dress up as your favorite that. Microsoft Office product. <laughs> now we've got uh, uh, Jeff Could Willinger, be. who's doing Together Mode in Teams, kind of just a chat. And we've got uh, Sharon Weaver in Alt Space VR, hosting uh, the Cards Against Humanity stuff, as well as a chat room in VR. Very and cool. Missing anything? No, it should be fun. I, I yeah, just to, to to plug the 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 area that I'm I'm doing. So it's uh, in fact I will you know, later today also have a schedule a first schedule put together. But we've got recordings or we have live sessions and recordings. But we have Teeper, we have Dan Holm, um, we've got Bill Bear. Did Naomi ever respond? I don't think so. No. Uh, it, and uh, but there's a number of Microsoft people as well as MVPs and RDs yeah. that are going to be uh, doing some live, some pre-recorded. But that's a three-hour block of essentially 10 to 15-minute topics. And so I'm going to publish out that schedule, you know, the first version of that, fill in the couple other slots, and anybody else. I mean, you know, if there's, we'll do a kind of an AMA format if there's filler time in between any of those plan times uh where people can jump in so uh and i'm going to be recording that uh, that entire block because i think it will have some great content we'll be able to chop up into videos and and produce for people to follow up on later anyway i love it a party with a session hangover <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like it's funny when i when i put first put the registration out there there's people who are saying i'm interested in the community not interested in the party and i'm like what's what's wrong with the party why would you not be interested in the party and it's like uh, is it because it's not educational enough well let's let's have at least one educational track for the people who it's if it's during their business hours they can still justify it um, yeah there you go but what's kind of fun is we're doing uh, sharepoint spaces virtual lobby so your ability to bounce between the rooms um and be able to check out what's happening in different places cool yeah should be fun it's m365vc.com uh, is the the website to, and to to go and register. I'll I'll put it in the chat too. Excellent. Thanks for the plug. And let's see, we've got uh, so we've got uh, about six minutes left. Let's uh, get through one, maybe two more questions here. So number nine uh, is that the one you were talking about, Sean? Uh, yes. Sean? 
Okay. So Jason says, uh, says I'm hoping someone in the, the Brains Trust can help me out uh, with an administrative control question, working with a local subsidiary of a global organization who are the trail site of Teams Calling. Is there a way to scope access within the Teams Admin Center to regional or active directory org-based groups? For example, uh, local support with Teams service admin role can be contained to attendance, queues, resource accounts, number ranges and uses in the region so they're able to change say auto attendance for another division or country i'm out so. <laughs> <laughs> know what you know know what you don't know and don't confuse the two so so let, let me say one thing about this like the admin center it, it, it does have some trimming based on um based on how you divide up groups so like you could say these are sharepoint administrators these are exchange administrators and so on and even within teams there's um there are a number of different roles but those roles are not designed to be region based so much um i think you'd have to create so, some some of your own kind of design where you're saying because if it's all in one tenant and you're saying europe Middle East versus Americas, and you're trying to say these people should only manage these, you're you're almost creating a layer that um, it, it sounds like the geo layer layer, you know, where you're trying to do something geo wise. Can you use dynamic groups? You could create a group, but in terms of trimming the UI and the team's admin center, that's where I think you're gonna have a little bit. Of yeah. You know, I, I wonder if you could use labels as an example to say um, these people these teams people. are managed by these groups, these people, but it'd be more like saying they're they're admins, you know. But yeah, I mean the the uh, the other side of that, I mean, if you have people that uh, you know in there that are set up already, you've established uh, eighty groups for each of those regions. <laughs> And you can always uh, label, you know, give, create admin roles where it's they're assigned to that region. But you're right; they'd just be an admin. They'd have the ability to do that across multiple regions, but that they're only responsible for. You know, maybe you have an SLA in place for the users within that region, um, and so it'd be more of a community organization, you know, an admin management of who owns what. I, I don't know that you can limit the controls. Like you can only do things, take action on users within this assigned region. Yeah, seems like the OU kind of thing. It's like if they're in this domain, then you can manage them. But when it comes to the tenant, if it's one tenant, you're not going to get that right. same level in the admin UI. It's in terms of these are the teams you can manage and so we're going to give you admin on this set of teams that are that have this label then the label being europe or emia or something but but in terms of trimming the ui or something like that it's like you can do some stuff in ad but it doesn't seem like the tenant is designed to be geo based well and that's why a lot of organizations that have multiple tenants for that reason they want to have that firewall between those geographies and so they'll have multiple tenants, and that's where so for the for the large enterprises where a lot of their requests, the multi-tenant capabilities come from, wanted to have that rolled up experience. And Microsoft is is doing a lot. There's a lot that's on the roadmap towards that multi-tenancy. It's exactly this scenario for a large enterprise. There are valid reasons where you might have a a German tenant, and then you know, and then the U.S. tenant. Um, and so if you have regions that have very different, um, you know, uh, compliance and governance rules in place, you may have separate tenants to help manage that. It's I'm, much more difficult to do to manage some of that in a single tenant. I've been I've been in some organizations where we follow a follow the sun kind of support model where it when when Europe is is live, they're supporting the the tenant, and then as the sun, those guys go home. We're then taking over in the Americas and supporting even European users who may still 
be up and doing things later in the day. But basically, the, being able to get that 24-7 follow the sun model, it's great to be able to leverage everybody and say who's primary, who's secondary, or who's on call based on the time of day. So you get you get better coverage. If you were to say Europe's only they're they're primary and there is no secondary, they just have to support 24-7 for their part of the tenant or the set of calling plans or um, whatever you're kind of referring to. It's it's it ends up being a trust question. You know, if they're if they're truly different parts of the business and you don't trust those folks and that's where you want to cut them off. That's uh, as well where security boundaries tenant is definitely one of the boundaries. Um, but there are those geo. I know SharePoint has a number of geo kind of uh, specifics to where you can say these sites are in this specific geo location. But when you start talking about teams, I don't know that we have all the same kind of abilities to split it by geo. Right. It sounds like a governance problem. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Make the humans work. Yep. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, hey, we're at the we're at the top of the hour. Um, so really appreciate everybody for joining in and thanks for everybody that uh, asked questions and the handful of people that participated in one of the live streams. We'll be back again at 6 p.m. Pacific for uh, the APAC uh, side of this. And this is episode 20 23. 23. 23. That's right. So, yeah, plugging away here. So, uh, and of course, you can always go out to, uh, uh, to YouTube and search for the Microsoft Community Office Hours. It's out on the Collab Talk YouTube page. You can go to my blog at Buckley Planet and look at all the office hours. You can find every one of the past recording. Again, this is our 23rd week in a row of recording these. And if you've not seen these, we for the we take the two one-hour sessions, combine them into a video. It's out on YouTube. I then provide a complete list of every topic that we cover with a link to this the timestamp, so you can jump to that specific discussion you don't have to wade through two hours of video to find that important dialogue although we encourage you to do that because um there's always hidden gems within it uh, you know i'm you doing you know I, I don't even believe it when i say it guys sorry uh, i'm like you're dang i don't know if you're <laughs> selling it or even helping it. But he doesn't he doesn't timestamp the yeah he doesn't timestamp the jokes i do no. some of them are you kidding yeah. Oh yeah, wouldn't yeah, you have to have. Wouldn't you have to have jokes to timestamp them? I mean, <laughs> generally, Eric. Speaking, every time you're on, it's a joke. Stop talking about Sean like that. <laughs> oh. uh, no, it's like for example, I think I have on here. Like I have when we talk about uh, last one. I said at, at the twelve thirty six, we talked about this week's t-shirts last week. Um, and, uh, there's once in a while, there's something here. Oh, I said like at, at the one hour, six minute, 56 second, Sean does not have an update on the maze issue. <laughs> uh, but we talked shaming. for a couple minutes. I know that's right. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it, it's fun. I do. I do. I think I've, uh, ridiculed everybody a little bit. Yeah. You're, so, you're pretty equal opportunity yeah. about it. That's right. That's right. So, all right. Well, gents, thanks a lot for joining to everybody. And uh, we'll be back in a few hours for round two. And in the meantime, you can yep. drop us. If you have questions that you'd like us to address uh, live or offline, we, we do it all week long. You can email us at officehours at collabtalk.com. And uh, thanks, everybody. And we'll talk to you soon. Peace. Take care, guys. Okie dokie. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Great seeing everybody. Hours. Yeah. All right. Let me uh, let me go live and get that all set up. Oh, I'll leave on. it on. I, yeah. It, it does. Pat, how? We'll see how that uh, shows up within the recording. So, hang on a second. Al's got a show. Hi there. Uh, Al, I've got a, let me see here. Oh, I'm good. I'm actually in the right. I'm actually in the right tenant. Hey. <laughs> oh I am so thrilled. Oh, this is becoming such a mess. That's it. Well, let's uh, we'll kick things off officially since uh, we, we have a quorum here.
Uh, but this, this is the uh, part two. Uh, I'm getting some echo back. Yeah, somebody who's uh, got their sound on their laptop, desktop broadcasting. Hal? Is that you, Hal? Oh, it just went away. Mm. On it. <laughs> this is the oh, Microsoft right Community back. Office Hours, and uh, this is a, a AMA format, so ask us anything. Well, not, not me, I guess. Ask AUA format. And uh, yeah, so this is the part two of oh. episode 23. And uh, we have uh, 11 questions that were on that list. Anything new pop up during the day? Anybody wants to address? I didn't have a chance to go out there, but now I got to open my email. Oh, man. See, I had everything shut down. I was playing some nice games. <laughs> and magic. Here I go, booting everything up yeah. again. We've got, we had a cast of thousands this morning as well. That was uh, pretty amazing. We had Riz, who never shows up for the <laughs> evening sessions. Because he needs his 12 hours minimum of beauty sleep. Uh, we had Joel Olson join us. That was that was the first time Joel joined. Did no. It, was it the no. second time? Yeah. Okay. At least I, I, I seem to recall. Joel. Yeah. But Joel, we had Neil, who might show up this evening. Um, unless something caught on fire. And then Rob. Um, and we had, uh, that's right, um, Rob Bogue joined. Rob Bogue. And so it's great. And we have, of course, uh, Mike back. Yeah. We, really get, back. To talk, we yes. really get to talk about your trip that in, in detail, but it's a beautiful, beautiful part of the world. I really like the Black Hills and all that area around um, uh, Mount Rushmore. It's just, it's gorgeous. It is. It's, uh, it's extremely, uh, you know, beautiful country in terms of, I loved it because of the free range, the wild animals. I mean, yeah. literally, you're driving down a road and you have these animals that just come down to the road, elk and bison and what have you. And they're just, they're, they're actually, you know, you don't bother them. They don't bother you kind of a thing. They have signs up all over the place saying you don't want to, you know, basically you don't want to upset the animals. Stay with the elk, please. Yeah. But uh, they, they were just, they were phenomenal. I mean, uh, it, was, it was quite an experience. Now, the scenery and everything, that's awesome, too. But I, I, I think I enjoyed the animals more than I enjoyed the scenery. So, um, and I, 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 avoided, I, I avoided the people as much as possible. <laughs> people suck. Yeah. Well, so while I was telling about, like, about a month ago, and I drove my daughter out uh, from Minneapolis out to Salt Lake City, and... We passed through. We were in the middle of the night, you know, through uh, um, and we didn't get to visit Rushmore. Uh, we stayed the night just past that. And then uh, we we kind of did a step ladder down through Wyoming, took some back roads. It's the beautiful thing about uh, the, the, the summertime is, you know, it, it's uh, all the roads are open. And uh, we did run into one thunderstorm that uh, scared the crap out of us. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, uh, we were so the the speed limit was seventy five or eighty. Uh, we were doing about twenty five thirty. I couldn't see anything. <laughs> I could see the headlights of the car in front of me, and I was just being very careful. I'm glad I slowed down. But then everybody just kind of we came to an exit, went off, and there were a couple dozen cars, people crowding underneath the overpass. Bunch of uh, bikers. <laughs> I, I just yeah. Uh, yeah. no no motorcycles, but I mean they would have just been screwed. Uh, yeah. because uh -huh. it was rain. It was so thick. I mean, it was just, uh, my first thought was, well, thankfully we're in a flat area because flash floods, you know, but it was, uh, it, I mean, it went past pretty quick and opened up and was beautiful after that. Um, but as you said, Mike, we, we stopped a number of times because we had wild and, uh, and, and as well as, uh, uh, regular animals. We had a couple times where we had cows and sheep. That oh, went yeah. out along the roads and uh, yeah. yeah, just a beautiful area. I, I love road trips in general. Yep. So do I. And going from the Midwest where I'm at and heading west like that, there's really nothing to see uh, when you and I apologize to anybody who lives in South Dakota, but you really don't have a lot to see when you get into your states. And, and most of <laughs> Wyoming. Right. 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 And, and there's a lot of cows. There's a lot of cornfields. There's a lot of windmills. 
uh, and there's a lot of sunflowers, which is really cool. Uh, but it is probably the most boring seven hours of driving I've, I've done in a very long time. <laughs> You know, people would always complain. I mean, like, as a kid, we did trips from growing up in the San Francisco Bay Area and go visit family in Idaho and Utah and driving all around. And, and people could talk about how boring, like, northern Nevada is. Northern Nevada is gorgeous. Yeah. You come up over the ridge of a hill. I mean, it's high desert. And where you see the highway stretch out in front of you and up and over a mountain, and it then takes you an hour and a half to cross that span i mean it's just amazing uh again i like road trips but it, it's beautiful but I, you're right when you get out uh out into parts of the midwest where there you see nothing <laughs> yeah. well the, the, the middle of nevada at least used to be that way um well you really had nothing north, between reno north right Vegas, and out, out, out in the middle of well out where area 51 and that that area pretty much is. I mean, you can go for miles without seeing a fence post. Yeah. Right. No mile markers, no advertising signs. Great place to bury yeah. a body. Yeah. I saw I saw advertising every like 10 feet. Yeah. I don't know if you're f familiar with Wall Drug, but they <laughs> like, you know, half their advertising budget is spent on billboards. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's uh, let's jump in with uh, well. Any any follow ups to any of the questions from this morning? We didn't have any tasks, no homework from that one. No, no. I uh, I just had a follow up from the uh, comment I made about flow, uh, and okay. as I sent to you guys, is that um, there is a uh, an event happening in Microsoft uh, at the reactor in Redmond, uh, where uh, James uh, Lao Liao Lao John John, John I'm sorry. John Lou. John Lou. Okay. I'm sorry. I didn't want to butcher his yep. name, but I did. Uh, and I've heard him speak before about flow and I thought he was great. You guys backed it up and said that you had as well. And uh, he's actually doing a uh, learn flow, learn your first floor and it flow in an hour. So I, that's, it's really cool to watch something like that and see how, see how, you know, the experts do it. So. Yep. Yeah, I signed up for that. I saw your face on there on the meetup as well. Yeah. And yeah, now John's great. I, I've known John for many years through uh, the old SharePoint Saturday and the, uh, let's see, the the SharePoint Conference Australia, SharePoint Conference New Zealand. And, uh, and so he, a lot of people that know him around that part of the world, Asia Pacific, I think he's based out of uh, Singapore. And, and so a lot of events around APAC. Um, so and and for those who don't know, I mean, I was talking about how Teams, uh, in Teams now, you can actually trigger a flow from any message in Teams. So if anybody's interested in that, uh, you have the ability that whenever a message is sent uh, by someone or by an automated thing or it's received and it's it's actually brought into a team, you can trigger a, a Microsoft flow off of it, um, which could be anything from you know a workflow of a document to turning on a light bulb. Uh, you name it. So it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. And uh, for those that are watching on the live stream as well, if you have questions you'd like us to uh, attempt to answer, then you can, uh, of course, uh, post it on uh, my page over on the uh, Office 365 community page, wherever you see the live stream. Uh, you can also email us at officehours at collabtalk.com. And uh, this, the, the, Dual recordings will be combined and be added up to YouTube and then also out on BuckleyPlanet.com. And I'll go in and put the timestamps of every topic that we discuss and share that back out with the community pages as well. So when uh, wind powers activate. Yes, that's right. All right. Uh, let's jump in. So, folks, and I'll and I'll try to uh, pay attention. I was a little bit slow to respond to some of the questions from this morning's. But uh, yeah, so feel free to ask any questions there or comment. And uh, all right, let's start with uh, number 10 from Jay. I bel believe we did number did we, 10. Did we do that? Uh, no, we did not. We did not. No. Okay. All right, so uh, I'm getting an error message whenever I try to change a communication site to a hub site. So SharePoint question. Uh, it's newly created with a one terabyte quota. Currently I have 30 terabyte available space with my tenant. I'm also having the same issue when using the GUI, but it does not show a specific error message. And that error, and obviously the image, 
that's in that it's blurry so none of us can see it. If you click on the link, Sean, and go look at the page. <laughs> oh, so you're saying it was a an image transcription problem. I'm saying that my paste and then expanding the size of the image di didn't do it any favors and it got all blurry. I get that. <laughs> this site has exceeded its maximum file storage limits. Um, now, even though you, let's see here, you may have a ton of space, but there may be a lot of um, storage in the content database stored up, um, used up by um, deleted files. If you're doing, if you've got auditing turned on, classic SharePoint auditing, that'll do it, but that's, I don't think that applies to online anymore. Um, there are other things that can chew up uh, storage transparently. So I would go in and see what you can figure out might be chewing that up. Um, because if SharePoint's saying this, then, you know. And by the way, folks, chewing that up is a technical term that Sean uses frequently. That's right. Yep. Shredding it. <laughs> Is that is that in the family same family as suck on that or? <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> or I guess suck on this. Whatever. Whatever. Uh, hey, hey. Move uh, along. Yeah. No. I, you know, one of the my assumptions here too, or I guess a question asked is, have you been able to uh, uh, make that change before? Was it working previously? Uh, I. I mean, I, I'm going to defer um, to what you're looking up there, Sean. But um, you know, if you've if you've had the ability to do something in the past and now it's not working, um, that is a slightly better problem than it's you've never been able to get it work. Um, it could be a whole different set of problems. Yeah. Um, so I'm just looking at the commandlet description, which I'll post this and uh, it's nothing wonderful, but I like that they, uh, towards the bottom, there are different notes that said, if the site doesn't exist, this commandlet returns a file not found error. So it's one of those with incredibly intuitive error messages. <laughs> so that, what it's telling you, um, Jay, is <laughs> I guess I wouldn't trust that. Um, if you are confident that that meets the criteria to make a hub, I would uh, contact support and just see if you can get them to help or at least to give you some clarification on that. Because based on what I'm seeing here, I don't trust any kind of error message that's going to come back to you. That might, you know, that's just me. And that's a gut feel. But. Anybody else have any other experience or thoughts on that? Nope. Nope. No. <laughs> no habla. No habla. Share point. I uh, sure you uh, do. Very much. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll. Uh, well, thanks for that, Sean. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And we'll. Uh, yeah. There's lo nothing like starting it off, kicking things off with the whimper. Again. Oh. I know. I know. Going um, down with a noogie. So 11, uh, number 11, uh, Mizonnet, Mizon, Mizonnet, Mizonnet, whatever, uh, asked, well, when I am in a Teams meeting and go on mute, I can't seem to use the Microsoft speech recognition to open other apps and make notes while I'm still on a call, but this yes. works with browser version of Teams. Yes, and I have seen this tech, uh, this note before. I. I want to say that I saw it on the tech community that uh, somebody from Microsoft posted that when the actual uh, Teams full client is loaded, it takes control over the voice uh, recognition and it won't allow. It's kind of like a, a switch when you use your microphone that you say, you know, it takes exclusive control. Well, it's like so, it's like using any applications that's using your camera. You can't right. go open another application to also leverage that same camera. So it's a you can open it, but it just can't device. capture the device. Right. right. And, and I will I will say this too is that it's the same is true with PowerPoint. 
because in PowerPoint, you can actually have the live captions and you can do that while you're actually creating the PowerPoint. It'll, trans it'll translate your what you're saying. And when I had Teams open and PowerPoint, PowerPoint took exclusive control of that and wouldn't allow Teams to transpose it. So. Such grabby software. Yeah. So, yeah, but there's, uh, I, I don't know what's going on with, uh, I mean, it, there's there's not 100% parity between the desktop application and and no. the browser. I don't know if you'll ever have that. No, think. no, because yeah, there's just there's nuances there. But there's also, I mean, Microsoft is putting more emphasis around the browser side of that. And my response would be, don't use the desktop application. Yeah, and I would agree that to a point because uh, many years ago, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little history here. Uh, many years ago, um, I don't know if people remember this, uh, but there's always been something with what they call a fat client and a thin client. And it happened in my Citrix days, and it's happened in my VMware days, uh, and now it's happening in the Microsoft. So it's not, it, it's, it's just the way software is created. They no longer want to support the fat clients. And it, because it's harder to support, number one, but it's also harder to update. It's harder to, you know, be able to integrate features as quickly as they can. Is this a form of fat shaming, Mike? I, so yeah, Sean, it is. Sean, it is. I spell it P-H-A-T. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's a coolness factor <laughs> thing. So that's, that's fat clients. You would. That, that rocks. You're yeah. very happy right now. Yes, but it's less judgy. Yeah. <laughs> Judgy. So I suppose that's, so. <laughs> that, that's the story. It's pretty I hot and tempting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, no, I mean that that's a that's a great point though. It's um, so I think that probably answers that. It, yeah, at least in the business productivity space, there are plenty of other spaces that fat clients are are still the way to go, particularly oh, yeah. that goes low level on the system. Well, especially when you have the, the web client that's based off of Flash or it's based off of Java. Oh, no, 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 uh, no. Oh, yeah. Silver, <laughs> Silverlight. Come on. Oh. Yeah, Silverlight. Oh, yeah. yeah. I know. I, I brought it up last week as well. So Not smart. I hate Silverlight. It cost me at least months of my life. Good friend of mine that was the VP at Microsoft who uh, owned that at one time, one time and I was trying to get him on. He went to Adobe and he's moved on from there, but he uh, he retired from from Microsoft. Retired for a little while, got bored, went back to work. But he was a uh, uh, he was over at Adobe. I was like, hey, I've got a I want to interview. I want I wanted to talk about uh, you know so the the partnership uh, between Microsoft, Adobe, and SAP and kind of this other stuff. I said, and on my list of topics. I wanted to talk to him about the history. Like, tell us, give us some of the background on Silverlight and some of the decisions made there. And he, uh, yeah, he laughed at that. Yeah, he's like, why do you want to talk about that? I said, I just, I think that will be the section of the interview that people will jump to. Well, you've got, you've got a couple of jokes to go around, right? You have Silverlight, you have Vista, which is like the hugest joke you could ever produce. Um, and then you have, you know, things like Microsoft Bob. Which was, yeah. Flippy. Well, Flippy wasn't like a Flippy. joke. Flippy wasn't a joke. Microsoft no. Bob was a joke because that was Bollamer's project. Right. Bollamer wanted that. And that, that, it was just a nightmare. That was Windows ME. That's when Bob came I, out with some I don't people like when people, when people are, are uh, oh, I'm yeah. sorry, Bollamer. Yeah. Windows yeah. 95, hey, that was one of the most successful of all time. Come on. The introduction that's, of the registry. Yeah. That's yeah. not ME, though. ME was no, that's a, not. This is original Windows 95. ME Box was trade, PCs right? without, without an operating system. Yeah. M ME and uh, Vista were just, I can't believe they produced those. And, you know, Windows 8.0 and 8.1 are pretty close, but. I just don't like when people <laughs> are, are bringing up these, these kind of failed products and then everybody disses one of my favorites. What? The uh, Zune, oh, the Zune, baby. Yes, there you are. <laughs> so I got this one. Let's see. Now you can make fun of this one. That's Christian, okay. Is that really your favorite? A Zune is your favorite? Mm. Oh, cool. Put it away. The Kin. You actually got one of those. I'm another impressed. Zune. There's another Christian Zune. is the last 
residents of much defunct equipment, I think. What are you talking about? I got my pebble you. punch. <laughs> You're proving my point, man. Yeah. This is hey, this is my favorite. Okay, so here's the act the original Ken, the the first one. <laughs> They'll still work on Wi-Fi, but and then uh, this is the the pride and joy. Uh, Susan Lennon gifted me this one. I wanted it what? so bad, but a Gen One, the brown Zune. What you do? What you give it to you for? Because I asked. No, I just mentioned I I love that. She's like, I have one. You can have it. I'm like, okay, thank you. Well, and the I funny funny here, the end of the story is uh, there were uh, there were maybe like a handful of songs on it, and one podcast I, of Todd Clint, Todd and Shane. Oh, jeez. I deleted. I it. had two of those, Cal. The tail. Uh, I had the original gray box that's chicken Coco one. Three. Yeah, that's a Coco 3. That's what I learned how to program on. Wow. And assembly 60, uh, 6809E. Yeah, actually, what I did, ran on that was a 6800, 6802 cross compiler. Uh, that was fairly easy to, to, to come across uh, to, uh, to build. Well, it worked on a remote control system for a uh, of a radio remote base system. I, I did the telephone interface. Cool. And that was in 6800, 6802 Nice. Been a while. Ooh. Very nice. Exciting stuff. And Christian here's one. Well, no, I just, now when I learned a program back in, well, what year was that? Did they have color yet? 82. <laughs> no, it was, but it was fancy. It was the amber screen. Mm. So that was like the latest thing. So, yeah. yeah, so we were doing basic. No, we were we were uh, doing basic, and we were my brother and I uh, volunteered with the uh, special needs class. It sounds bad, like I I really enjoyed that time, the volunteering and helping out. I got to be friends with this kid Kevin, uh, helping him learn to uh, count out money. We we're trying to train him to uh, uh, you know be prepared to kind of do some things out in, in on their own and. Uh, but we earned computer time, and uh, my brother and I, we actually wrote some, uh, did some animated games. But it was, I mean, our animations were keyboard characters, and we painstakingly yeah. built every one of the screens. Yeah. And then did kind of a choose-your-own-adventure choose your Dungeons & Dragons type game. <laughs> wasn't and, until the yeah. C, uh, C64 that we actually got sprites. That was advanced graphics and uh, mm -hmm. three-voice polyphony. With sound. That's a great band name. <laughs> Three voice polyphony. Yes. All right. Yes. Question. Question twelve. Yes. Yeah. Questions. Um, Questions. Chuck, it, it actually sounds like a tenacious D uh, uh, song title. Actually, I, I can see that. Yeah. All right. Uh, Chucky Lee fifty six says. Uh, so there's a yellow message bar not displaying in site collection permissions page. So. After a migration, content databases from most oh, another SharePoint from 2013 to 2019, our users and site owners noticed the yellow message bar no longer there, mm -hmm. uh, undefined. This only occurs to all of the site collections that are from the 2013 content databases migrated over. Site collections created on 2019 doesn't have the issue. Mm -hmm. uh, does anyone have any issue of how to resolve this? Or something well, like how the yellow bar message bar needs to be enabled. Um, well, it's <laughs> like everything else with SharePoint, it depends. I mean, he says it was migrated, but, you know, did he use a third party for this? Did he use a content database upgrade because he'd have had to go through 2016 first? Um, we need more information, Chucky Lee. Um, my guess is that... Um, you well if hopefully reverted the site um to get rid of any customizations uh maybe not but if you still got a site that's trying to hang on to customizations or has um css uh, uh javascript and other stuff that's still active from the previous version you can uh get some really wicked hiccups in how the site displays um, because by the time we got to 2019, uh, Microsoft had actually done a pretty good job of um, upgrading um, 
the HTML behind the scenes so that wasn't using tables to position things and all of that goofiness. But side effect is if you're trying to carry forward any customizations, just give it up, revert the site, start from the base and go from there. But if you've got more information, how, how did you upgrade it or um, how did you migrate those? Um, you Since you're focused on the content databases, it suggests that you did a content database attach. So I assume you went through 2016. I can ask you about what you saw in 2016, that kind of stuff, but send uh, um, office hours at collabtalk.com. Uh, collab Let us know what you're doing or did. All right. I know that uh, the guys, Sean, are excited by uh, SharePoint, more SharePoint discussions. Mm. Um, well, suck it up, guys. Another SharePoint question here. Uh, <laughs> D. Nguyen says, um, so in SharePoint, I created a read-only list, but when a user clicks to view an item in full, for some reason, they are still seeing the pencil icon for columns and fields that have multiple lines of text. Uh, it gives them the impression that they can edit, but then when they save, they get, sorry, you don't have access error. Is it possible to hide that pencil icon to clean up the interface? Yes. So, okay. All right, let's move on. Question next. Uh, question. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I would, first of all, it's going to depend on, uh, well, you can do it, but the version of SharePoint is going to dictate um, exactly the best way to do that um, the fact that you can set something up so that somebody who doesn't have permissions can get that far suggests it's an older version of sharepoint um, because you know once we got to maybe 2013 by 2016 if you didn't have permissions to it typically it was security trimmed out and you wouldn't even see the element um, but since people can do that this suggests an older version of sharepoint um, but I would go about it with um, maybe uh, a content editor web part. This is low tech content editor web part or script web part um, and just insert some CSS. If you know CSS to hide that element, because I'm sure it's got a, a class or at least an at least a class or an ID that you can target. Um, but it, again, if you know, you're one of those people who's got more information. Um, let us know what version, because that's really important in all of this. Well, from but, the image from the screen capture. He's uh, always on SharePoint Online. Yeah. Oh, it surprises me that he can do that then. Um, well, that little pencil, if we were to use uh, F12 debugging tools, you can probably get a CSS class for it or an ID. Uh, and then it just becomes a matter of uh, hiding the element either directly with CSS or if you like jQuery, you can get real flashy. Um, but that's that's an easy approach. There are plenty of other ways to do it too, but just a suggestion. Okay. <laughs> I like for these SharePoint questions how you guys just let me like ramble on and then Christian's like, all right, yeah. moving on. All right. You're the man. <laughs> well, and I, I, but I think, you, I, hey, the, look, there's an element that's in there and it's something that you can go in there and you can find it and modify it. This is true. There you go. Now, whether uh, there's an update or something that breaks that removal, you might find yourself in there doing that uh, <laughs> once in a while. Yeah, um, that's the so. problem. With, yeah, uh, you want customizations. Yeah, anytime you're going to move away from an out of the box, this is SharePoint Online, I mean, out of the box, you know, uh, uh, experience. Uh, it's going to force fix those some of those changes, and and so that's why Microsoft is. Uh, I still love that Teeper quote um, from years past, which is you know somebody saying, you know, like, well, I've got this really complex, customized environment, and and you're doing all this stuff to the UI. So what am what am I supposed to do? And and Teeper's response was uh, simplify your requirements. <laughs> and uh, pushing people towards this that 
a lot of these organizations, I get it. You want to have like branding capability and stuff, but Make they it look were going like something so, other than SharePoint. Right. But they were going so side. Well, look, f- for one, SharePoint was ugly for a long time. Um, it's not anymore. So they've they've kind of delivered on on that at least. And uh, but some organizations you know, wanted to have such a customized experience where it's like, you know, it would have been cheaper and faster for you just to go and build it from the ground up yourself as a portal rather than go through SharePoint and then complain about a bunch of stuff. But so you, you want to take have the benefits of all of the capabilities and the rich features that come out. It's like simplify your requirements, use as much out of the box as possible. Um, and uh, that's and, always been the mantra. Yeah. I, I think the issue but back then, feel, though, yeah, the, the issue back then, though, was if you used SharePoint, your company was probably spending a metric ton of money on it. And so they had a very big hammer and everything looked like a nail. A lot of times it became a political, we have to use SharePoint. Otherwise, I can't tell you how many potential customers I've suggested they use something other than SharePoint. I said, you know, we could build it in SharePoint, but we'd be working around the system. I believe in going with it rather than fighting it. And you're going to be fighting it tooth and nail all the way. You want a relational data structure. You need that. SharePoint's not your tool. I'd like to be paid uh, by uh, metric weight of of money as well versus the value of the money. I think it'd be a better deal. I, I I'm inclined <laughs> to agree. Gold bars, way you know. Yeah, but I dollars. would take a metric ton of cash. You can pay me in one dollar bills, and I think it will still exceed the value of the you know the the amount on its own. But anyway, all right, so yeah, I agree. okay. So, uh, question 14. Um, uh, oh, look at that. Another SharePoint related. <laughs> Move files and keep uh, metadata. Um, if yeah, this so, is going where I think it is, no, you're not well, going to be me, doing it. Go well, ahead. Read it. Okay. Come on. You're just, you're, people can't see it. It's a very visual media here, media mirror. Please. Um, so K Jocko, K Jaco, K Jaco, K. Uh, we need to so asks. Uh, we need to archive files that we want to move to a new library. The new library is created by using uh, ShareGate. So for the move, to clone settings and lists, and so on from the original library. So everything is identical between these two sites. The main or the original library has some columns with lookups to a list. When we move documents to the archive library, all the lookup columns metadata are removed and therefore blank. So half of the columns are now missing. Another strange thing is that content type uh, always changes on a document you move over to in the archive library. We have te- 20 different content types. New files created in the archive library is working fine. Um, Mm-hmm. So key points and problems. So the lookup metadata is gone when moved. Content types are changed in a moved document. And new files created on archive libraries working fine with metadata and lookup columns. So this is all about SharePoint object IDs. Um, when data goes across, if you're copying it or you think you're moving it, the values themselves will go across. But it, unless the only thing I'm aware of that actually re- you could where you could retain an object's identity was the content deployment API uh, that was rolled out with 2007 and kept for a while after that. Tools like ShareGate, which are going through the web service interface, you are not typically retaining object identity. So even though they can set up a flat list and bring the data across, everything has a different object ID. The problem is those lookup columns they're looking up by object uh, identity. And so the simple act of copying, it breaks the the references. Um, likewise with content types, uh, you know, it's all a symptom of the same problem. So I would see what you can do to retain object identity. Uh, I don't know that there's much to really do that. Yeah, you know, uh, Things have changed so much since I was you know, working actively in the space. Um, so the technology is just is fundamentally different from you know the products that we had. That uh, so yeah, I, I don't have any value add. 
for that. Yeah. Yeah, it gets into the details. I'd say make friends with uh, folks at Sharegate. They are very friendly people. And once you're friends with them, you might actually be able to talk and get some answers out of them or some help. But, uh, well, you can certainly find Benjamin Nyland's uh, contact information everywhere out on the web. Uh, as well as his picture. Yep. Little Ben faces with a beard. That's right. I still think it's funny. I was going through photos and found photos of him back in 2011. Without the beard. And baby faced with his hair sticking up all crazy and yeah yeah good times <laughs> uh one more sharepoint question so uh mike and hal just enjoy sit back and <laughs> soak it in soak it in we'll tee it up for uh, you yeah so here is i don't know if we're gonna have a, an answer for this uh sean but um siri asks uh and not and now, why is Siri okay. asking us instead yeah, of us I asking really. Siri? I know, it's creepy. Uh, I have several sites with one hub site uh, connected to all team sites. When uploading files to the library in one site, it shows up in the hub site, most recent documents, web part, but disappears in about 10 minutes. We want to, it to show up in more, most recent documents and stay there. Have checked the web part edit and filter is on earlier this month all types of documents. Is this a bug? I don't know how that web part's supposed to work. Um, most recent documents. I know that at one point you could, they had a little bit of customizability on the period of time when something would like remain with a new flag. You had some ability to control that, but you know, most recent documents web part and a hub site interaction I, I don't know how that's supposed to work. Yeah, I, I, I'm, same thing as it be a hub site that's going to be collecting from a number of different locations. It could be that it just gets pushed out. Uh, you said it, it disappeared after 10 minutes, though. I don't think it's supposed to auto purge those from that list if there's not been <sighs> other new ones coming in. Yeah, and I would want to ask you, they say 10 minutes. I mean, are they clearing their cache between refetching pages and things um is it actually 10 minutes or is this like a transient event uh that goes away very quickly but perhaps we're looking at cash I data i don't think it's a timed 10 minute i think it's just kind of as an example it's within minutes that it's gone that would be my assumption um, yeah. but i mean okay. if you if you don't have any other new things that are going on again if it's a if it's a hub site you've got how many different people that have access to that that could be uploading content to one of the sites that are part of that hub and pushing it uh, out of its place. But if that's not the case and you don't have uh, anything that would push it out of that that view and it's disappearing from that list, like what's showing up in that list? Look, I, I have, uh, so I, I, I think this feature is, is a little bit suspect in even in some of my office usage where I have things that unless I go in and pin them, pin them. Yeah. they just, they disappear and they shouldn't. It's just me that has access to them and they do not show up where they're supposed to be. Um, I find that's controlled to some extent by the account that I'm logged in and using the office apps as I've got. Oh, we lost, we lost Sean. His time was up. No more SharePoint questions. Uh, he was sharing some information that apparently Microsoft does not want the world to know. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is what happens yeah. when you share NDA information. He was going into um, okay. secret knowledge of what's happening with the recent documents. Uh, That's right. That's right. And the Microsoft police are actively listening to this pod this this broadcast every week they're like we have to listen to this because they're going to spill something i've seen it once if it's not a hundred times what they do they probably you know they you get the ropes that swing down they crash through the windows and uh you know he, so he's probably being arrested right, right now out of brazil huh did you get yeah. a picture of this by exactly. the way that's a good that's a good image of sean right there <laughs> oh and now he's gone yeah he's probably oh, listening fun. to us Yep. yelling at us saying bad words about us how that's exactly where i went as well with brazil so I, you know 
before we were harassed about it. I don't know if he's actually watched it yet. It's one of my all-time favorite movies, but yeah, uh, yeah. I, 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 my favorite is uh, you know, it's, it's Robert, a uh, young Robert De Niro, but where he goes out the window and swings on the rope up, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> disappears up, you know, swings out and up and disappears. He's the renegade HVAC repairman. Yeah. You've yeah. seen it, Mike, haven't you? Oh yeah, yeah. It's kind of like uh, certain uh, movies that I believe are required uh, viewing. Brazil is one of them. Um, Caddy. Caddyshack. Yeah, yeah, that's a classic. Uh, yeah. I'm a huge fan of Fight Club. It, I just, uh, it's dark. It's I don't think violent. it's a classic. I don't think that's a classic. Though. Yeah. I think I think you're look you're talking about classic. It's a deep classic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to talk about cult classics, you know, obviously Rocky Horror Picture Show. You know, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I, I yeah. agree with you. I mean, yeah. I, certain class. So in my mind, like I love, uh, yeah, it's like the Monty Monty Python, Monty Python. stuff. Of course. Holy Grail, Holy Grail. That's on the list. I, I really like one of the classics. I think is a classic is uh, Raising Arizona. Yeah, I that, love that movie. That was it. That was the uh, actual first movie, good movie that I saw Nick Cage actually do. <laughs> it's fantastic in that. It is a great movie, but. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I've got certain, uh, I don't know, I, I'm not a big fan of uh, like the top 10 lists of favorite movies and stuff because, you know, you kind of, depending on your mood, change a bit, but like I'm a huge fan of uh, Blade Runner. I think it's my all-time favorite movie. Just absolutely love that movie. Yeah, that's probably yeah. the best adaptation of a science fiction novel for me, spending a lifetime of reading science fiction novels. That's probably the best adaptation of, to give you the feeling that the same feelings that I felt reading a novel from a movie. Yeah. That that yeah. one takes my, takes the cake. Yeah. Now, see, was, I got that. I got that from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Mm. You know, and I mean, that was a say. I read the book, and I'm like, this yeah. is exactly what I experienced in the book. But Blade Runner for me, and, and between Blade Runner and also went and saw my dad took my brother and I to see. Uh, the first Alien movie when it came out yeah. scared the crap out of us, but you know, <laughs> fantastic. But it's though I think Blade Runner and Alien um, on more the, the the horror side of things, but both painted a picture of a non crisp and clean, uh, uh, you know, futuristic. It was it was much more. Um, I mean, I love a lot of the post apocalyptic movies. But those two were more, more just like it was, you can believe that they were in the future. You know, you've got a oh. freighter, there, there was dirt and grime, and it wasn't Star Trek, shing, you know, well, clean. You could have got, got that from Mad Max, you know? That's yeah. true. Yeah, Mad Max and <laughs> Thunderdome. Yeah. Well, those are good movies, too. Yeah. yeah. But I, I'm, st I'm still going to insist on Forbidden Planet. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I could see that. I mean, lot, too many cool people were in there. Yeah, yeah. Before well, see, that's they why were I, cool people, and that's the cool part of it. Because I mean, most of those people at that time, Earl Holloman and at Gracious, uh, Anne Francis, uh, Wesley Nielsen, uh, and there's yeah. two or three more. I mean, they went on to be huge. Yeah, television. Yeah personalities for uh, J J uh, Jack Kelly, who went on to be Brett Maverick on the, and Bart Maverick on the, the Maverick show. Uh, just so many of those guys went on to be huge TV show stars, and that was long before anybody ever heard of them. So, And, it's, and the movie is exceedingly campy, and really, for, 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 for something that had a lot of, I'm guessing you would have to call that mechanical CGI, it was pretty well done. Yeah. Well, how, do we get on, how do we get on this topic? I mean, we oh, just like... Uh, maybe Sean just Sean. that we ran out of yeah. SharePoint stuff. So. <laughs> yeah, it threw us off. Uh, the one last thing I would say, it's like I, I'm a really big fan of, uh, you know, Spinal Tap, of course, is a new, another yeah. new classic, you oh, know, yeah. quotable. But I have to say, the better, uh, the better movie, I, as much as I love Spinal Tap, best in show... It is fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> it is it is amazing. It, yeah. I mean, just every every character in it, it, it it's just uh 
you know that that it was hilarious to see Spinal Tap, but they they perfected the art with uh, Best in Show, and I, I don't know how much of what was spoken on screen, if any, was scripted. I think they had a general outline, and then the whole thing is just an hour and a half of ad libbing, and it's just hysterical. Well, have you ever seen the? They have a documentary that goes back to old movies like Animal House and Caddyshack and Airplane and all these other ones. And they actually talk about how the movies were created, right? Caddyshack, Bill Murray and Caddyshack, he had one line that was written. <laughs> I just yeah. I just saw something last, last week on that about the whole, like the most famous line was the, you know, the uh, Cinderella story. Yeah. And that, yeah. Uh, that whole thing was just him going. Just like yeah. there was there was nothing said there and it was no. just him making stuff up. Everything, everything he made up. And the the you know, they they were like, Yeah, we gave him one line in the entire movie and he just took it from there. And that's that that to me is acting genius. That's just that's genius. Mm. <laughs> All right, uh let's jump back in. So I have this one. Uh I don't know, uh, you know, uh, this again, this is one I, I can't provide any help here, but um a Cartwright says, uh, I've been looking into the shifts preview connector in Power Automate to approve open shift requests. I've managed to get the templates, um, but I'm having issues. So it's all out on GitHub. Uh, every time the flow runs, it fails with a forbidden, uh, forbidden message on each open shift request and a full error. And if you guys have the email, if you can see that error code that yeah. You know, I can't find any useful links online. I've just I have access to approved requests in the apps. Does anyone have any ideas? I don't know if, if either of you have played around I, with that at all. No, or, Power Automate is something that I have not. I mean, I remember downloading an app uh, that was made available. Somebody created one for a uh, uh, early warning system. Uh, so one of the MVPs created a, a Power Automate app that uh, would allow you to send SMS messages to your entire company if you had some kind of uh, panic alert or active shooter or something like that. But that is the extent of what I've looked at Power Automate. So no well, help, help here. But I, I think one of the other things to consider here too is that it, it's in preview. Um, so it's a work in progress. There's there could be a lot of just you know odd errors as they're building something out. I mean, one thing. There he is. Um, Don't let him in. Don't let him in. Oh, Too late. So, Too so late. one thing I would say is is um, to make sure you document to uh, to go in and log the issue. Um, to to go in there, and of course, this is posted. This uh, uh, a Cartwright posted this out on uh, the Microsoft Tech Community as an open, so it's an unanswered question that's out there. Um, so uh, I, I'd say that uh, if anybody else is experiencing this, that you can go out and and search for that on tech community. Um, so it's Microsoft Shifts for Teams, Power Automate Errors, uh, and uh, vote that up, like that, follow that that comment. Um, but uh, uh, to to log that with, with Microsoft so that the right people are viewing that paying attention to it i i say i said this this morning you know while uh, across the board microsoft product teams are doing a great job of listening in to what's coming out of the community you have you know dozens of these product teams and the engineering teams that are building each of these not everybody's always paying attention to what's being posted whether it's relevant uh w whether they've got queries they've got you know filters and they're viewing posts out on tech community or not to find this so don't just sit and wait for a response um push until you get your your feedback into the hands of the right person um so sean talking about number 16 i don't know if you yeah. have to add to that yeah i i don't it sounded like whatever you were saying addressed it i don't have any practical experience um with that connector that's another one where my my I guess to sum it up is um, I don't know the answer, but I admire the problem. <laughs> <sighs> uh, 
Sorry for the disappearance, bravo, guys. Bravo for bringing that sorry, up. All right. Sorry for the disappearance. My system decided to spontaneously reboot. Is that because of those those hyper threads? Those. Yeah. Um, no, I suspect it's because I haven't completely tied off all the uh, threads, <laughs> cables, and whatnot. I still got to put the uh, new graphics card in once I get that RMA back. That's when I'll clean things up because I, it acts like it's, it's some. I hear a little click, something shorts out, and then everything goes blank. So, by the way, it's just sideways. Is everybody? Is anyone planning on on picking up uh, as soon as it's available the new Xbox? My son is. <laughs> yeah, he's already he's already picking out you know his uh, his uh, games and everything. He's just like. He wants the Xbox Gold Pass. He wants all this kind of stuff. It's, you know, he he has a PS4 right now, and he's mm. just like, the new graphics are just phenomenal, Dad. I got to get this. You know, he's gonna sell back his PS4 back to GameStop or whatever. So, yeah, yeah. I it, I commented to my one of my sons asked. He's like, Dad, are you gonna get it? And I'm like, Look, you know me. And Sean, you'd appreciate this too. Is it unless there's some new Lord of the Rings game? <laughs> I like I have that's exclusive to that. I have no reason to get it. What did I, I want see new today? Mordor. I want it now. What did I see today? It's a new Gollum game exclusively for the oh Xbox my. X. I, I uh, yeah. There's the purchase in right there. <laughs> uh, nobody tell my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's hilarious i i can totally appreciate that many of the games uh, many of the upgrades i did in the past were driven by mech new mech warrior game releases yeah i went to a 486 overdrive chip um to get that playing on the mech warrior 2 mech warrior 3 it's like it, you can literally look at it and you could see where i did upgrades <laughs> That reminds me, is, have any of you guys uh, taken a look at the new flight simulator? I've seen it yet. Screen, uh, screenshots from it. A lot of friends uh, on uh, Facebook. It's so really was, impressive. Yeah, I was actually on a Zoom call uh, with someone, and he's like, yeah, I just got just got flight simulator. And he's like, you know, has a little Cessna. You know, you can pick, a, you know, you're familiar with flight simulator. You can pick planes and all that. But he, he's like, hey, I wonder what this looks like coming over Zoom. You know, <laughs> so he like changes the script and it looks really good. <laughs> yeah. But one change they made, I heard, is that uh, they really discourage you from flying under bridges. Yes. yes. I, wasn't it Rob? Was it Rob Oak that just posted that today? Or I, I somebody, don't. I think more than one person posted it. Somebody okay. likes to fly under the Golden Gate. And uh, but yeah. Yeah. But you can fly into tunnels. It actually lets you fly <laughs> into, into tunnels. Yeah. Yeah, because that makes so much more sense than flying yeah. under a bridge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I because it, it's, uh, yeah, I think a lot of people are like me in that respect. Is that, like, obviously I'm going to fly under a bridge. So, what do you mean they discourage it? High-tension power cables. I mean, come on. Is there anything else to do with those? <laughs> it's too bad. It's just too expensive. <laughs> yeah. The flight sim sim game, yeah. Or the flight sim. I shouldn't say flight sim game or some purist will poo poo me. I've noticed a couple of outfits are have got full consoles out too. They've got, you know, all the the, the matching flight screens and controls and throttles and throttles. Yeah, I've seen some some of those. Yeah, wow, two three thousand dollars. Yeah, but it's actually the there. There's a shortage now on joysticks, on flight hmm. sticks. You know, really? Yeah, there's, yeah. A, there's an actual shortage. I had the um, the uh, A10 uh, hands-on throttle and stick system that I sent. I, I was never using it. I sent it to a, a middle school buddy of mine who's a big flight sim guy, and he was thankful for it. I don't know if he actually got it running or not, but that was a sweet thing. That thing, like, weighed. That was solid well, steel. I, you know what, it, it's, it's like when you do the driving games, and if you have the actual your rig and can sit and have the pedals and like that it, it it improves the the experience similarly you know to, to set something up that has that where you can have the kind of the cockpit experience 
it improves that the game. Like I, I used to crush it in the discs of Tron booth edition <laughs> of that of that game, and I could never Switch. get the same score when it was the standing free regular arcade game. But I'm telling you, when you had the surround sound and it was boxed you in so I could lean back, I'd, I'd play off the walls, you know, in that booth. So I was really upset when they moved that machine. It was there. I had the high score. It was at the Brigham Young University and the <laughs> Wilkson Center, the community the center, the, the center of the campus. And I went back for, for 10, 12 years visiting campus and it was still there. My high score was there. And then it, down by the bowling alley, then they moved the machine and they put in a dance I, I party machine. I don't want to talk about it. I think you were the last person to play it. And they Probably. discovered no one else played it, which is why the score stayed. And then it was removed to generate some money. So that was one of those things where I could play one quarter and be in there maybe 50 cents. And I was there for an hour, hour and a half. I mean, just, yeah, money well spent. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, I had a lot of alone time. I hear you, man. <laughs> I am no, st uh, no stranger to the arcade. Yeah, being being the, the the broke called student with no vehicle, so girls don't like to date the guy that has no money and no vehicle. I don't See, know what that is. And that's plays video games. <laughs> that's the problem. You went yeah. to a campus that allows vehicles. Yeah, yeah there you go. Didn't All right, that. We, we've got a few more minutes. Let's try and knock out uh, nineteen and twenty here. So the non SharePoint. Did we? Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there's some other SharePoint ones. I'll, I'll leave them for next week. Um, so 19, uh, Kennehoe. Uh, for some users on some sites, the share via email button does not appear on our, uh, yeah. Yeah. SharePoint. SharePoint Online yeah. Internet. Some of our users on some of our sites are missing the share via email button. It appears to be due to a permission setting of some sorts. Uh, I'm not quite sure which setting to look for. So if anyone could point me in the right direction, have you guys seen that? Um, I believe it. I don't specifically know that with SharePoint Online. There, SharePoint at one point had uh, like 47 individual permission levels uh, that you could assign. <laughs> I'm not sure if we have more with SharePoint Online right now, but I would suspect we do simply because you can do more with that than you can on prem. Let me see if I can find that. All right. Well, the, in the last one here, they're all SharePoint ones. What was I doing here? Yes. I'm pulling. I, from, don't, I know. don't know. What yeah. Like earlier, wonder did I miss a couple? And it's no. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. Yeah. My well, apologies, but no. He plays uh, favors to Sean. He he likes Sean. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Uh, in the last one speaking, it says word, but. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, tricky. Well, that's why I went and I, I grabbed this. Uh, and when I put this list together, of course, I had it sitting there for a couple days and didn't share them with you guys. So I'm working on that as well. Um, but it wasn't because I and I knew at the time that it was SharePoint related, but I thought it had it was a broader appeal because of the of what he's trying to do and and uh, get the other controls from Word. So I'll pose the question. We can answer or not answer for the next two and a half minutes here. But um, <laughs> this is from uh, Anna. Um, and she says, uh, we are working share with SharePoint Online 2019, or SharePoint Online 2019, SharePoint Online. Uh, we are customizing list forms using SPFX. Uh, we got stuck in a point on rich text editor. We need similar behaviors like in Microsoft Word for bullets, numbering, continue numbering, et cetera. Is it possible to integrate Word in a, with a web part to get those additional controls? Um, or is there a way to launch Word inside of a web part and the user enters data and gets to save it to our list form? No. Probably, but it's going to look like Frankenstein's monster. She's or he's going to be whoever it is is going to be better served just finding uh, an HTML rich text editing control and employing that in their framework web part. I wouldn't try and I don't know about um, the word uh, web based application. Uh, I assume uh, 
the web-based applications a little friendlier, but I, I would doubt that Microsoft invested any time in any great extensibility and integration with it. I don't think so either. I think the real question is that we want people that want to have more rich text capabilities out of the box uh, for the web part. And so that would be something I just, I don't know, but it could, again, I would be surprised if there wasn't some similar request already in user voice uh, and, and or something on the roadmap for this. They've done a lot. There's been talk about extending a lot of the rich uh, text capability um, so that's to be aware of what's out there and log it, go in and log that in user voice. If there's something that's not out there, um, post yeah, it, get people to vote on it. That's a developer request though. That's the problem. Um, I understand what you're saying. I agree with it, but that's a development request. Well, the you know, that... re request for it to be integrated, integrated or for the additional features. To have it available. They're talking about putting it in a. SharePoint framework web part. That's because the features don't exist. They're trying, that's a workaround. They're saying, if we don't have the features out of the natively, then could we integrate with Word? My, my response is that you want the features, you want to be able to add these other Word-like features, make that feature request for the product. As a secondary question is whether you can integrate it or not. Okay, well, I will take a couple pieces of homework. Um, since I've been in, I've had to go look for these sorts of things before. Um, I know somebody's done it in the past, but it was years ago. It was a completely different version, you know, uh, of things. It wasn't online, but they were able to go in and expand that. But I mean, to your earlier point, I mean, it was a Frankenstein solution. Um, it was a one off, it was a very custom solution um, for that SharePoint portal that we talked about earlier that you don't want to go and customize and make it stop looking and working like SharePoint. Yeah. Well, I, in this case, you know, like for instance, Akumina as a, uh, um, you know, digital um, workplace product, they've got a rich text editor embedded in their provided think, hosted application. I think they, most of the internet as a, uh, you know, the internet in a box solutions have, additional capabilities like that. Yeah, but my point is they can probably very easily um, add that capability just by getting a free or relatively cheap third-party control. Um, think of the jQuery UI, which extends jQuery with um, full-featured calendars and other sorts of uh, UI elements. I'm, I know that they're out there. In fact, it may even be part of jQuery UI, but you wouldn't want to probably you wouldn't want to put that in the SharePoint framework web part. They're probably looking for a React component. Um, let me see what I can find. Okay, I'll take that away. I'm not going to sure. blog about it, but Sean always gets good. the homework. Sean always gets homework. We don't get. You notice that homework. trend? Yeah. You guys are the eye candy for this operation. Hey, I've had homework. <laughs> I have it more, more operational, but, uh, oh, hey, I did have a question for you guys. Can you now hear the sound effects? When I. No. 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 Crickets, you don't hear them? Nope, sir. Wrong teams. Dang it. Well, see, I wasn't able to test it before I added but apparently I, I need to go in and configure it some more for it to work, but. Well, perhaps if you spent less time on the key <laughs> and more time in the configuration, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Sean, it's a lot less fun. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. I believe that. No, I mean, the problem is, you know, I need to test, I need to actually, we need to be together. I need you guys to be able to respond. It's not something I can go and test alone. It kind of, it sounds like it works to me. You know, from my side, I need you guys to be able to hear it, but yeah. Well, you know where I am. I've helped you with, uh, as a yeah. test before, so. The other, the, other, the other reality is I, I remember to go in and test it about 10 minutes before we go live in the morning on every Monday, so. A whole yeah. 10 minutes? You, it, it, that's foresight. I know. <laughs> that's double digit Thank minutes. You. Well, we're out of time. Um, yes. We don't have time for you to mock me now. We could do save that for next week, but. Oh, uh, Again, Talk thanks for uh, for watching, paying attention, watching the recording for this. Um, if you want to, if you have questions you'd like us to try and address, um, 
you can email us at office hours at collabtalk.com. Uh, we're, we'll be back next Monday or every Monday at 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. Pacific. And uh, tell your friends, tell your family members. And uh, otherwise, we'll be scouring the interwebs for other questions that uh, are not all SharePoint related next week. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We we'll get a little more diversity in the questions that are out there. You know? And how I just want to say you look mighty dapper today. Well, thank you kindly. I do like the cat's background. It's one of my favorites too. So yeah. <laughs> well, they were they were in here prowling around earlier. But... All right. Well, good to see everybody. Welcome back, Mike, and we'll see everybody next week. Have see a good one. Always like it. Bye. Bye.